I'm starting in the trunk first because this is where the finished product, cooled, dehumidified air, is pumped into the passenger compartment on either side by two fans. You'll see the nameplate Frigidaire, just like on a refrigerator in your home, made only by General Motors. This is the only year that this uh, system was made by Frigidaire. Starting in 54, the evaporator looked just the same, but it didn't have this uh, badge on it because beginning in 54, the Harrison Radiator Division of General Motors began uh, producing the air conditioning systems. And, in, and as an aside, 53 and 54 Packards with factory air conditioning also use uh, General Motors uh, air conditioning in those years. Starting in 55, they used their own system. And this uh, also came with a nice, uh, or I found a nice air conditioning in Cadillac cars for 53. It's got 117 pages and it uh, shows the entire uh, workings of the system, all the components, uh, all the fine details of what each part does. Now we'll go back and see where the air comes out. Here is uh, the uh, right side register. And each register has its own recirculate or uh, fresh air vent. This uh, can be turned to let air through the um, vent here. Unfortunately, this uh, the package tray got a uh, hole punch punched in it there, but otherwise it's in good condition. The middle part is the uh, air return. This is the uh, main control, of course, and to be for first year, this was an amazingly complex, uh, very uh, uh, well thought out system. For instance, the Chrysler's in '53 and '54, and this isn't to diminish them in any way, but in '53 and '54, they had a three-speed switch that operated both um, blowers, and that was it. This has a uh, toggle switch. You turn it to the right. That sets on the uh, the uh, solenoid. You turn it to the left. That's just fresh air. And then you still have uh, pull out fresh air vents. Uh, you have separate rheostat controls for each fan. Plus you have the ability, although the compressor has no clutch, uh, from a bulb around the area of the uh, glove compartment, moving that uh, lever does in fact uh, send less or more freon through the system. Now I'm going to turn the system on and start the engine. Now here is the compressor compressing. Uh, the noise you hear is the fuel pump. When the engine's running, the compressor's running. There is no clutch. This is your low pressure valve. This is your high pressure valve. This is a pressure relief valve. If you can see under the compressor, there's another, uh, let's see, there's another small valve under there. The purpose of that valve is you put a clean rag under it, press the valve, and if oil comes out on the system or comes out on the rag, you've got plenty of oil in the system. Here's the solenoid that forces the Freon to go through the compressor. When the system is off, the Freon simply freewheels through the compressor. Got nice clear Freon going through, no bubbles in the system.
These systems are amazingly overbuilt. This is the only flexible line in the whole system and it's a braided steel line. You have a mammoth condenser here. And of course all this runs to the back of the car. I forgot what this valve is here. But now we're producing refrigerated air. And we're back to where it's being pumped into the car where we started about five minutes ago. I hope this has been instructive and if you have any questions uh, please email me and I'll try to answer them.